Thank, thank you, you um, uh, Madam Chair. Th thank you all so much for taking the time to be here today and um, for your am amazing caring about the communities that you serve. I'm just very grateful for your time here. Um, I, I wanted to, I have two questions. One, I think I can um, uh, ask Dr. Payment uh, because I, this is the longest shutdown in history. And uh, so I want to know from you in, in the work that you're doing, have you ever seen a crisis as devastating as this to your community or the communities that you serve as a, as a official of NCAI? First, I would say, um, as a tribal nation that uh, was not automatically recognized, we had to seek to get recognition. We had to acquire all the land. And until we got federal recognition, we didn't have any resources. We didn't have access to IHS. And somehow, we, we made do as a community. But we were very poor then. We had, I grew up without indoor plumbing. Um, the disease, um, our, our life expectancy was about 50 years old. Um, the federal government fulfilling the treaty and trust responsibility is helping us to, to live our American dream, our American Indian dream. And these threats, um, I haven't seen anything like this. Um, we went through the shutdown and sequestration the last time, um, but we haven't seen anything this threatening. Um, in my testimony, I'd mentioned, so I have family members who are using Vivitrol as medical assisted treatment to prevent them from overdosing, from preventing them from going to the street to get fentanyl and overdosing. And so this really is life threatening. Uh, Vivitrol helps to curtail the, the need for the addiction. It doesn't replace it with another addiction. So for me, it's very personal because I have immediate family <coughs> who, whose lives will be put at risk if they don't have access to their treatment and their medicines. And so this is, this is a crisis like we've never seen. Thank you. We had uh, someone in our community before the passage of the Affordable Care Act who did have to make those decisions. Am I going to treat my diabetes uh, or am I going to uh, get food for myself and for my family? And things that are very treatable and manageable um, continue to decline and the health status is worse and that puts a burden on not just us, um, their family, and, and the overall system. So it, it, it's a lowering, a, a decline of the contemporary health status of Native people that is completely avoidable. And, and again, the, the care for our people is part of that trust responsibility, and it just shouldn't occur. The impact of our program not offering food to our people would be devastating uh, a lot of our our elderly, our children, they rely on our program. Th they basically wouldn't have food or access to fresh fruits and vegetables that they receive from our program. A and the impact of the shutdown as a whole, uh, the warehouses are being depleted. There's no food coming in. During the 2013 shutdown, our warehouses were completely bare and there were very limited food options available for up to a year, it, that's how long it took. And that wasn't, the shutdown didn't last as long as this one. 